welcome back again. Today we continue the insanity, the insanity that is liberation of Hyrule Insanity's Extreme. And now that Fortress 3 is conquered, we are here to do the second part of Fortress 4. What reward will await us? Tune in to find out. So now that I actually have the magic brewery, I can get the reward for this area, and you'll see why soon enough. This first part is just designed to get rid of my bombs. I have no swords, so I can't use the sword slashing trick here. So that's a good way to control my bombs. As those of you who have played the first liberation of Michael, there was a challenge where you had to fight one after another. Two man handlers with your arrows only. I find this not to be too difficult. You just have to be careful. I find it easier to take care of one man handler first and then uh, take care of the other guy like I did right here. And you want to make sure you take all four of its individual parts first. I kind of messed up with that guy. But, uh, it's pretty straightforward. So now that that guy is done, let's move on to the next room. We will go back to that room later. This is absolutely one of my favorite parts of this game, and I am so happy that uh, James made this room the way it is because I actually had an influence on this room. I played the demo of this quest, and originally James had you fight these 10 Dark Net 2s with the White Sword. And I suggested, hey, that's the exact same scenario as the first game. This is Insanity's Extreme. We need to make it harder. And so he took my suggestion and made it so you had to only had your wooden sword to fight these guys. And so those of you who are having trouble with this room or get really mad because you have to fight 10 Dark Neptunes with the Wooden Sword only, you have me to thank for that. So, uh, this room makes me happy. Because I have the Wooden Sword instead of the White Sword, I can't kill these guys off quickly. And so, instead of using the strategy of killing off the Dark Nets quickly, you have to approach this room completely different than you would before, instead of trying to kill them off quickly, you have to focus more on survivability and focus on finding quick ex exits and do hit and run strategies and making sure you do not get cornered whatsoever. So that is the strategy behind this room. And as we slowly start killing them, just make sure to not panic. Um, and you'll be fine as you start slowly dwindling the darkness with numbers. One thing that you may question that you don't see me do until actually recently is you never see me face up while fighting a dark nut. And that's because before I used to always mess up for some very strange reason. But at the very end of the game, I finally, instead of facing down always when uh, slashing dark nuts, you actually see me face up when doing the 90 degree uh, trick. And it actually would have saved me uh, some hits here if I had done that, making this room a little bit easier. I actually counted the attempts. This only took me 11 attempts to do. So, I remember, despite this being a difficult room, I did a little extra self challenge for the first game where I fought 10 dark, uh, super dark nets with the magic sword only, and that was much, much more difficult. That took me, I think, close to 150 tries. So I'd rather fight two of 10 dark net twos with having to hit them eight times, 10, 10 super dark nets with only having to hit them four times. So. That's that. For the most part, yeah, I died in one hit because the numbers are so dwindled. Um, I just play it safe and the battle pretty much becomes trivial. So there's my little victory dance. Well, I didn't think I did a real victory dance. There we go, victory dance right there. Boom! 
every victory deserves a victory dance. So if you notice, look at what the position of the fire in that room. One of them has an arrow pointing down, and the other has a song note. That's a little puzzle that uh, was originated in Armageddon Quest. James has used that for both Liberation and Pyro games. Pretty much when you get the ocarina, you have to play your song underneath where the arrow's pointing, and that will unlock the puzzle for you. So, it's a pretty simple puzzle. And once you've seen it, it's the same every time. You can put the arrow in a different spot, but that's one of two variations. But regardless, let's get some fresh air. We are back in this dungeon again to play my word. And what's that word? More bombs. You see, I cannot hit that guy with the no more boomerang. I have to do that boomerang trick with the magic boomerang. And this is a neat little... It's, it's a puzzle, but it's not uh, really a military puzzle, but it's uh, I wouldn't even know what type of puzzle to call it, but it is, I'd say it's an obstacle puzzle. There we go. And I, I like this obstacle puzzle. I thought this was a very well done obstacle puzzle. So, good job. So now I have more bombs, and... I will be leaving Fortress 4 for the second time. And where I go next, tune in next time. Au revoir.